News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. There is no more famous shipwreck in the world, and the discovery of the Titanic in the Atlantic off the coast of Canada has been the dream of countless deep-sea explorers. Well, thanks to an American-French team, it is no longer a dream. In a moment, we'll talk to a member of the task force which found the Titanic. We begin with her star cross history. Here's ABC's Bill Blakemore. 73 years ago in April of 1912, when the Titanic set out on its maiden voyage from England to America, it was the largest ship yet built, 882 feet long, and, its owners bragged, unsinkable. It had a double-bottomed hull with 15 watertight sections. But on April 12th, it hit an iceberg in the dark and quickly disappeared. Until this week, when a French-American team pinpointed it on the ocean floor. The Titanic was found some 370 miles south of Newfoundland, two and a half miles down, where there's no light, no plant life, and freezing temperatures. Sonar from a French research ship first located the wreckage. Then to confirm it was the Titanic, an American Navy ship sent down a new unmanned diving sled called the Argo, outfitted with computerized cameras to a 500-meter-long field of debris on the ocean floor. It immediately spotted the Titanic's distinctive boiler. The American Navy ship USS Knorr is expected home early next week after it attempts a more complete photographic survey. Iceberg, get ahead, sir! As four movies and 28 books have since recreated it for us, the massive iceberg tore a 300-foot-long gash through three of the Titanic's watertight sections. In only two and a half hours, it disappeared, along with 1,500 people. Only 700 lived. Survivor Ruth Blanchard was a 12-year-old watching from one of the lifeboats. The Titanic was a beautiful sight. The uh, lights were all on, but the rows, there were five or six rows uh, where people were standing looking over the rail, you know, and wondering, I suppose they were waiting for somebody to take them off, to rescue them. It became instant legend. Some said there was a fortune in jewels on board, along with high society names like Astor, Guggenheim, and Strauss. Whether it will ever be even possible to now raise the Titanic is not clear, but survivor Eva Hart, who was seven, traveling with both her parents, would not favor it. I say because to me it's my father's grave, and I, I don't want, I don't ever want to see the Titanic again. I don't, I don't want to see it raised. Whether or not it ever can be raised, lawyers are now trying to determine who owns the sunken ship and any valuables on board. Bill Blakemore, ABC News, New York. This afternoon, I talked by ship to shore radio with the chief scientist on the Titanic expedition, Dr. Robert Ballard. Have you actually seen the hull of the Titanic standing upright as it's been reported over? That's correct. That's correct. It's sitting upright on the bottom. What kind of condition does the Titanic look in over? It appears to be in uh, superb condition. Uh, well, one would expect that given the fact that we're uh, working in extremely deep water. It's uh, ice cold and in total darkness, so it's, a, it's an environment of high, high preservation, over. Do you have any plans to try raising the Titanic, over? Oh, I think that would be ridiculous. Uh, no, absolutely not. In fact, I would like to, uh, to go and try to ensure that uh, desecration of this uh, memorial to 1,500 souls is left the way it is, over. Is there any possibility you might try to raise the cargo? Over. Uh, no, uh, I can't believe uh, that it would be economically uh, wise uh, to do such a thing, and uh, I don't uh, want to do that personally at all, and I don't want to contribute to any such undertaking. Over. As far as you're concerned, the Titanic should remain where she went down. Over. Yes, uh, it's uh, like trying to raise the Arizona and Pearl Harbor. Uh, I see absolutely nothing to be gained. And uh, I think that uh, a, a ship like this, uh, being a sailor of many years, uh, you ought to leave it where it is. It's, uh, it's a, the souls have now been located, and uh, they're fine where they are. Titanic II luxury vessel to set sail in 2022. New York, a replica of the Ship of Dreams, also known as Titanic, will sail the high seas in the year 2022. An announcement about the luxury Titanic II was first made in 2013, but work was suspended due to financial constraints.
Now that those financial matters have been resolved, building has recommenced on the vessel, according to a media release from Blue Star Line. The ship will follow the original journey, carrying passengers from Southampton to New York, but she will also circumnavigate the globe, inspiring and enchanting people while attracting unrivaled attention, intrigue, and mystery in every port she visits. Clive Palmer, chairman of Blue Star Line, wrote in a statement. The launch has been a dream of Palmer, an Australian business magnate, for years. RMS Titanic was a passenger liner that attracted some of the richest people in the world to sail on it. On its maiden voyage on April 10, 1912, the ship left Southampton, England, with more than 2,200 people aboard on its way to New York City. Four days later, it struck an iceberg just south of Newfoundland and sank. More than 1,500 people lost their lives in the sinking. The tragedy became the plot of multiple films, including James Cameron's award-winning 1997 drama Titanic, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. The Titanic II will have the same interiors and cabin layout as the original ship and will include 21st century technology as well as modern safety procedures. The recreation of the famous ship is in honor of the 100-year commemoration of the launch and untimely end of the Titanic, Blue Star Line wrote on its website. will have the same interiors and cabin layout as the original ship and will include 21st century technology as well as modern safety procedures. The recreation of the famous ship is in honor of the 100-year commemoration of the launch and untimely end of the Titanic, Blue Star Line wrote on its website.